E3 2022 has been cancelled. Every video game has gone extinct except for free-to-play multiplayer games and the balance of the universe has been sliced in half. Day and night cycles have been randomized and people have become so desperate that they've started purchasing lottery tickets. But one day, you see something rising in the sunset as it lifts its head up to speak. Humans, this is not the end. We have more games to announce so that your son can stop playing Warzone. It is truly a holy grail that will guide your souls to a new light. One that is not full of teabagging and hearing phrases such as Where's my team? or I'll fuck your mom. Also, stop buying the Fortnite Battle Pass, you fucking weirdos. Your wishes have been granted and your mind has been blown. Let's see what games have been shown. With E3 gone, it's time for Summer Game Fest to sneak into the backstage and show us some stuff before it inevitably gets forgotten a year from now. Seeing Street Fighter 6 again was pretty cool, especially since Guile's hair can be even more polarizing in 4K. We got to see gameplay for the Callisto Protocol. I'm hoping that this game is more scary than bloody, because that's what horror tends to struggle with in my opinion. They show this guy getting fucking brutalized. And then the horror takes a back seat. But you do have this gun that can throw enemies into a fan. Goat game is back. Goat game is definitely going to be the game to just screw around in for a couple of hours, and now you can have two other people to terrorize the innocent bystanders around you, which is great. Modern Warfare 2 2 was a video game that got revealed. I love the name Activision, but the gameplay looks like the same boring shooting that hasn't changed in years. Halo, Uncharted, and Last of Us exist. You don't need this barebones skeleton of a shooting game that also costs $70. And if you want another shooting game, then there were at least 5,000 others shown in this fucking direct. They just had back to back to back to back to back to back first person games that always looked like shooters. Although there were a couple that stood out to me. Routine, uh, because instead of a gun you had this scope thing and it looks like a more story driven game. And Midnight Fight Express, because apparently it's just one guy working on it, and the combat looks badass. Oh, but the best gameplay reveal was when The Rock took his shirt off and showed the Black Adam trailer. Thank you, Rock. When you said it's about drive, it's about power, it changed my life from a beta virgin to a giga chad. Virgin. Rock! Nightingale looks like it could be pretty fun. I'm not super sure about this one, but you can build stuff. I, I like building stuff, and there's giants and other creatures that can attack your, your town. I don't know much about it, but it seems like it could be cool. And finally, Neil Druckmann comes out. Oh shit, okay. This is it. Uncharted 5. I mean, it's been like five years. It's gotta happen, right? This has gotta be it. That's a JPEG, Neil. Oh, wait, he's showing another game. Another Last of Us remake, huh? I guess the graphics are better, but how much- What the fuck?! PC Gaming Showcase was pretty much just a giant joke. All they had were some games that were already shown and this bird exploding. The hosts were amazing, though. Get ready to overclock your eyeballs, because this next trailer is coming in hotter than my computer with more than three chrome tabs open. OTK had a naughty three of their own that I didn't sit through entirely, but I did see a couple games that looked fun. Knights of the Deep is a Souls-like game where you fight using a lobster. It's amazing. And the other cool game was Coromon. With Nintendo producing absolute dog shit Pokemon games for the sake of making money, Coromon is a really nice alternative for people who want to still play Pokemon-like games. It's very similar to Pokemon, except it has a ton of stuff that we've wanted Pokemon to have for years. It's challenging without being the easiest shit you've ever played in your life, and has a built-in randomizer, and it's $20 compared to Pokemon's $60. Oh, but we can't forget about the best game that wasn't in these directs, but I wanted to talk about it anyway because it's just so fucking good. Sonic Frontiers. It looks so like a Sonic game. Sonic is slow as shit. The combat looks extremely repetitive. The puzzles are you pressing a bunch of squares until they light up. There's not much in the open world. Sorry, I mean open zone. Everything seems to take a really long time to kill. <gasps> 
So hopefully we get like another Sonic 06 thing happening here. I thought the Xbox Direct was going to be pretty bad, but it had Hollow Knight Silk on, so every other Direct doesn't matter anymore. Huh. No release date. Anyway, Scorn looks really weird, but I love that about it. The big thing about the game right now is atmosphere. Everything looks so weird and spooky, and there's no dialogue, so hopefully as you explore, you can learn why the guy is pulling out this his umbilical cord. It's fucking gross. Minecraft Legends is something that I have no idea how to feel about. It'll probably be good since it's Minecraft and the devs don't want to screw that up, but I hope they show more so we can understand more of what the game is about. But the big boy reveal was Starfield, a game where you can build your own ship, and yes, mine is going to be a dick, don't ask in the comments. There's planets to explore, and the game is essentially No Man's Sky Skyrim. But, but, well, it, it is Bethesda, who haven't been as good over the years, uh, and the shooting looks really bad. So I'm excited, but skeptical. Nintendo made me wait a whole extra week and a half for a Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Direct, so you're already on thin ice. I want to see Donkey Kong, I want to see Breath of the Wild 2, Metroid Prime 4, a new Mario game perhaps? Come on Nintendo, give me one of those and I'll be happy. All aboard! No!